Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on, oh wait, we're starting a new unit here today. So it's called chemical equilibrium. So let's get moving, bam. So today we are talking about the characteristics of an equilibrium reaction. This is just the basics to get you started here. So number one, chemical equilibrium reactions are dynamic. That means that they are constantly changing. Okay, number two, they are reversible. So all other reactions that we have talked about before are unidirectional, like one-way streets. They start off with reactants, you end with products. Now we have a two-way street here, okay? So we can go from reactants to products and then also from products to reactants. That's the key thing. Okay, number three, um, this can be, this can be approached from either reactants or products. So that means that you can approach either, either of the reactants or the products from the reactant side or the product side. And that is a really cool thing. Okay, so it's like a teeter-totter. So I don't know if you remember way back when you were a child and you were going at the playground with your parents or guardian, okay? And they took you to the teeter-totter. And there's this balance between the two sides there and you go back and forth and back and forth and you eventually set up an equilibrium and it can be dynamic. You can move things on the teeter-totter and slide it one day, one way or the other. You can put two people on one side and then you can change the equilibrium. And so then you must adjust and account for those different changes along the whole uh, balance, if you will. The same thing happens with a chemical reaction. You can approach it from either the reactant side or the product side. They're reversible reactions and they're dynamic and constantly changing. Okay, all right, so here's a perfect example. Any state change is a equilibrium reaction. So if you take H2O and you have the solid state of H2O, which is ice, and the liquid state of H2O, which is water, at zero degrees Celsius, which is the melting or the freezing point, you can actually interconvert between the two different states of matter. That's either a solid or a liquid. This is an equilibrium. You can approach either the reactant side or the product side and shift the equilibrium. Okay, here's another example, and this is iron hexahydrate. It has a three plus charge, and thiocyanate ion, and that's on the reactant side. The iron hexahydrate with the three plus charge is yellow in color, okay? The thiocyanate ion is colorless. And then the iron thiocyanate um, complex ion with the water is a red color. It's kind of like a blood red color. And then you have water on the product side as well. So you can actually see this reaction as an equilibrium if you add or subtract or, or have you changed the reactants and changed the products because you can actually see the color change from yellow to red or from red to yellow. So you can follow this dynamic equilibrium with a colorimetric change. Really awesome reaction. Okay, so here's just uh, an example here, uh, not a chemical equilibrium example, but you can see that this gentleman here is on is balancing. On the left hand side, the reactant side, okay, he's balancing and he has his arms straight out, okay, and he has his elbow bent that's holding his leg. And then on the right hand side, the product side, he has his knee bent and then his elbow isn't as bent that's holding his leg. So you can see that there's this dynamic equilibrium with this gentleman here as he's making this balance here. And he can just slightly shift and change just like a teeter-totter, okay? So you can approach this from either the reactant side or the product side, but you can most certainly change the equilibrium. There are various different states that he can have that will make a uh, balancing on his tippy toes, okay? so. Think about it that way. It's dynamic, it's changing, it's reversible. You can approach it from either the reactants or the products, okay? So things that can change this are the concentration, the physical state, the temperature, catalysts, and volume all affect equilibrium reactions, okay? And these are all governed by what we call as Le Chatelier's principle, which states the following. If a system at equilibrium is disturbed, the system tends to shift its equilibrium position to counter the effect of the disturbance, okay? So simplistically, what that means is that the equilibrium shift 
will, um, will occur until Q is equal to K. So Q is called the reaction quotient, K is the equilibrium constant. So keep this in mind as we move forward in this unit and you'll understand what Q and K are and what their interrelationship is. Q could be at equilibrium, but it's not necessarily so. K is at equilibrium, okay? Q is the reaction quotient and K is the equilibrium constant. Okay, that is Le Chatelier. He studied mining, engineering, and glass, and ceramics. And he came up with this shift in equilibrium and this principle. Okay, and we're going to apply it to a variety of different situations here. Okay, most chemical reactions are actually equilibrium reactions, like a two-way street. Most streets along the highway, you can go either in the forward direction, either north, or you can turn around and go south. We've never approached this before. We've never encountered this before with chemical reactions. We've always gone on a one-way street. That is, we start with reactants and we end with products. So this is awesome. And this equilibrium unit is going to be applied to many of the other units, all the acid-base units that we talk about, more thermodynamics, precipitation reactions. So it's gonna include everything from this point forward. So you have to have a strong foundation in this equilibrium unit that's the basics in order to proceed on with the rest of the units for chemistry. All right, I am a crazy hat chemist and I got a great hat here for you, or at least my students will to totally enjoy this hat. Okay, go team. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'm gonna see you next time for more cool chemistry videos. You can see my website. There's all kinds of great things on my website and pretty soon I'm gonna have t-shirts that you can get. All right, see you later, bye now.